I actually did some work experience at Building Magazine while I was in sort of my last year of university and they invited me back um, to do a sort of, they had someone going on maternity leave, I was going to be an extra pair of hands around the office and I did I think a year with them but there was no job at the end of that. But within the group was Property Week and I was like, I can't remember if I went upstairs or downstairs, but I arrived at my new desk and sat down and found already three or four personalised invitations to different parties that were happening in the next few weeks. And I thought, well, this might be fun for a while. So, yeah, I, I very quickly kind of became really engaged in the industry and really, you know, actually, I think doing that year in building in the construction side showed me that actually, you know, construction was interesting, but actually property was really exciting and interesting. And suddenly, you know, within three years, I'd gone to what, um, become editor of Euro Property magazine. So suddenly I had the exciting world of property, but on a European um, landscape as well. I actually started, at, just to age me, at Euro Property a few months before the single currency came in, which was obviously a, a big catalyst for change in terms of how the industry evolved. So I was lucky to be at the forefront there. I think I'd have... I mean, the education is important, but I have to say the experience, both of being a journalist to begin with, which is a very exposing, you know, at the same time exposing, but also brilliant way of learning. You know, you get thrown in as a young person, you get told to go to a press conference or go meet a CEO and things like that. And you're quite young and you dive in and you hear very priv in a very privileged way from like the, the leaders of the industry. And, and I suppose I have to say experience because I think, you know, there was a point after 10 years where I thought, I don't think I want to be a journalist anymore or I don't, you know, or, or I'm, you know, I want to move on. And the decision was, should I go and be a journalist in another sector like pharmaceuticals or something like that? Or do I stay in real estate? So I suppose at that point, I think I really realized that I built up a body of knowledge about real estate and enjoyed it. And it would be a shame to waste that. So I suppose my answer has to be experience that leads education important. When we went through that period, through the financial crisis, the, the run up to that was an industry that was really interested in using debt and being, you know, and being part of the financial industry. You know, it was really found that alluring. So it was an industry that sort of slightly forgot that it was about the bricks and mortar, you know, took on lots of debt. And obviously the, the crash came and the, you know, and it caused a lot of issues in the industry. But what I think it then changed was the pendulum that had gone towards financing. It's, you know, went back a, little, a lot further. So there's still a lot of financing. So I think what's changed is an industry had kind of forgot it was about real estate. And now is back to thinking, I'm, this is really about real estate. The value is in what we do with the, with the buildings and the leases and kind of the asset management. And I think now with how the industry is changing as well, that plays well into where the industry is going. That we had our we had our glory days with finance, but then you know we use finance obviously within within the product. So that's one big change. Um, I'm trying to think what another one would be. I think another one is something we're seeing now, which is that you know we got went through that environmental kind of uh, wave, which is now well established, well incorporated into strategies. And that was that was good to see because to begin with, you really had you know companies really had to make a case for doing it. It's unbelievable now, but it was something new and something very determined that they had to do in their portfolios. It took a while to kind of really have momentum, and you just you just wouldn't see it now. And now the social side is coming in, and I, I think we're going through the same process. Social side is much more difficult to measure, but it's just really useful to you know it's just really nice to see that the industry is really adopting kind of that idea of community and the the impact of what it's doing on cities and, and communities much more so i think that's a good positive change as well the idea that the industry was interested in residential was non-existent i would say 25 years ago the dutch did a little bit of institutional investing maybe the swedish and you know a couple of other countries so now this kind of wave of all the excitement and interest in what we going to stop calling niche and alternative sectors soon as well so yeah and, and actually I think it's astonishing to think that 10 years ago you feel really great about having 60% of your portfolio in retail and now you're looking at that and it's your biggest headache so just the idea of how much the world has changed to just completely have seismic shifts in the, the risk and return risk adjusted returns and just what you anticipate getting from the sectors and and how and how kind of uh, solid they look going forward, you know. Can you rely on offices these days with what's happened post-pandemic as well?
I think a very early mentor that we didn't really have mentors would be Peter Bill, who was the editor of the States Gazette. He was the one who gave me my first job. By the time I went to move to Europe Property, he was editor of the States Gazette. So he was a very big support to me. And, you know, you learned a lot from, you know, his, you know, his, you know, what we probably call old school journalism these days, you know, just very kind of get hit the streets, go out and talk to people, you know, don't be afraid, you know, things are, don't be afraid to report things that are controversial if they're right, you know, we need to kind of talk about things in the industry. I think as, as, a, as a woman, I've been very inspired by Anne Kavanagh, who's now CIO at Patrizia. You know, she has always been, a, you know, a, just a role model um, throughout, you know, she's risen up through the ranks, always been kind of, you know, seen at JLL and other places. And I think what was nice about her, is she always kind of takes time to come and say, you know, what are you doing? What's going on? What's next for you? And she was one of the people we talked about quite early on about um, women talk real estate as it started. So I guess she's kind of an inspiration in, in that side as well. So my co-founder, Victoria and I, I think we just started to recognize that we weren't seeing many women on stage. It had been sort of slightly in the ether. You know, people kept saying, why have you got no women? Why is it all male panel and things like that? But I went and um, moderated a, um, a course somewhat, I can't remember where it was now, but I was the only woman on stage all day. And it just, to be honest, we were in a political environment that was frustrating as well. It was 2016, it was Brexit, it was Trump. You know, nothing was going well for, for women generally, it felt. So this, and, and Victor and I had both been in and around organizations that had often done events or promoted things for events. So we also knew how powerful that stage was. If you put women on stage for her individually, you know, it means better connections. People see she's an expert. People will start as a conversation starter. You know, all women are doing it more. Then there's more role models. There's more kind of, there's more ways to challenge, you know, the stereotypes about how we work in the industry. So it's pretty simple. It's a database. What was female professionals now also extended to professionals of all genders from ethnic backgrounds to, um, you know, to just say, sit in that database and say, yes, I'm happy to be invited. And then event organizers use the database to vet, to identify potential speakers and they can send messages through the site to start that, that conversation. So there's no way you can say there aren't women or other underrepresented speakers who want to do it. What we realized is that sometimes it just needs a bit of training, a bit of a leap for women to want to do it. It's, it's about confidence and it's no different for some men, but we were advocating at that time for women. So one of the neat, one of the ones I think not many people do as a course is panel discussion training. It's something we developed and we feel like panel discussions is such an easy entry route to being on stage. But if a woman looks at four people on stage having a conversation, she thinks, oh, I don't want to be involved in that. It looks unstructured. It looks kind of like a bum fight. But so we just spend time breaking down how that works. You know, the fact that there will be some pre-preparation, the fact that you can kind of, you know, can, you can really control what you say and, you know, be answer some questions, not answer others. So that's been a really good one. And I just did one this morning as well called Repositioning of Skills, which is more of a workshop to talk to women about how they present themselves. Because we do underplay what we do. We get a couple of volunteers to talk about themselves and then we kind of, you know, suggest ways that they could be, that that may be underplaying who they are. They often say, I am part of a team when actually they're leading the team. So can we get, take that qualifying language out and things like that. So and that's really fun to do, really inspiring. I think so as a journalist, you always think there must be a book there somewhere, right? But I think also just having, realizing that I had the vantage point of all that change. As I say, I started at Euro Property in 98 just before the Euro came in. And, and actually just a few, just in the, those previous few years had really sort of started that, you, you know, that international movement. You know, the American capital coming here, you know, with ambitions to buy everything when actually the industry was just very small scale and, you know, just did very kind of gentlemanly deals, you know, on a domestic basis. So the shake up of that, the arrival of the Euro, you know, this attraction of the, of the finance, just all kind of like just this great big stirring pot of things happening. And, and, you know, and to be fair, it was an industry that was modernizing and it should have gone through this because it was low 
small scale. It could do things bigger and better. And you saw that happening, you know, but they made some mistakes and, you know, their mistakes got rectified in the, you know, the biggest global financial crash we've seen. So in a way it was bad luck to be kind of modernizing and going through that. But I think there's lots of been lessons learned and it's really exciting journey. And, you know, young people who were aged 26 were sent off to start Royal Bank of Scotland's bank operations in France. You know, it was a very fruitful time for young people in the industry in the same way I think the tech world is that place now for them. Um, yeah, be, be open and curious, I think, you know, and I think we can see where the world is going and what's going to be important for the industry. And it's going to be technology. It's going to be our challenges with climate change. So there's already very rich areas that you can educate yourself in and make yourself, you know, much more valuable within industries. You know, there's no, you know, there's no excuse to be undereducated in these things. There's so much information going on. I think also kind of start early in terms of networking. Um, hopefully we're all out and about again. If you're a young person, you are like young leaders. If you're companies within InRev, InRev Young Professionals, something called Creation, which is a young person's network. These, if you're going to stay in the industries, these people are going to be your friends for a long time. You might as well get to start to know them now. And, and that exchange of information, like I said, is always very useful, I think. Take a friend. <laughs> You know, okay. there's nothing, honestly, there's nothing better than if you're in a room that you can go, okay, well, let's both go and talk to someone. And and I, and I think, you know, realise that people were in the same situation. And I, very few occasions where I felt like I've start, started a conversation, people just aren't going to be welcoming and hospitable. And, and I think get your confidence up by going to some of those events where they are more people of your own age, right? You know, if you go to if you go to the young professionals, everyone's going to be 35 and under. So that's a better environment to get your confidence. And, you know, my, actually, my former colleague just said, you just go up and say hello. And that starts the conversation. So sometimes even I have to say that to myself. And, you know, sometimes you go in a room and say, oh, you go and grab a, I don't even drink coffee, but I'll sometimes go and get a coffee to have a prop, you know, and, and I, I think some, so, so I, I think, yeah, start with the smaller, younger events, build up your confidence, but also recognize that people will always talk to you. With some difficulty, I'd say, because I'm freelance, I have lots of, of clients. Um, you know, I try to kind of block out time in my diary so that everything is not, you know, you know, it's not kind of some days it just, you know, you don't get time to do things. We talked about this before the webinar. You know, yeah, so, um, yeah, and just be, I suppose, just be kind of efficient. I, I've learned to be more efficient. I've learned that 15 minutes is a long time and you can get something done. You know, I know that's, you know, whether that's work-life balance, but just sometimes, I sometimes I, I mark my to-do list off with like red, yellow, and green. And green are like the really easy things that I suddenly learn to use those 15 minutes a bit better and I feel much better about my list. I can get finished at 5.36, whatever, so yeah.